So in my previous video, I looked at generally what kit mechanics is all about. And today I want to specifically look at the concept of kinematics. And in my previous video, I did discuss that there are a number of variables that we have in the study of kinematics. And I want to expand on those just a little before you get headlong into graphical analysis, understanding of acceleration forces and so forth. So the first thing is the concept that we have, and I've mentioned it, is, is how that we measure displacement. Now what is displacement? Now often it's confused, and I'm going to use a different colour here, it's confused with the idea of distance. But the two are not the same. Let me give you a diagram to help you understand the difference between the two. So let's say you're going from town A over here to town B, that is here. Very original names, I know, but it'll suffice for us. Now you check out your Google Maps and you discover that there's no direct route there. And so you're going to take a number of paths, streets, roads, and so forth to get to that point. So you might go straight, you might go up this way, you might go back and forth like this, you might get a lovely curve, and eventually you get to B. Now that is the distance you travel. Try it yourself, go to Google Maps, and you'll find that if you go from one A to point B, whatever your points are, that you're not going to get a straight line between the two in order to get there. Some will be a bit shorter, let's say walking may be actually a shorter path than let's say driving, but it won't be a straight line. This is what we refer to as the distance. However, if I were to look at the straight line path, that is from point A to point B in a straight line like so, that is our displacement. So you can see that by displacement is actually the shortest path between the two points. Distance can be any path. In fact, you can go around and around and around and have a really long distance, but your displacement is always going to be the same. But the second aspect here is that this aspect of here, which is the arrow. Displacement is more than just the length of the path between the two points. It's also the direction, which is also critical. So what we say is displacement is a vector quantity. Now, what does that mean? That means it has, it's a dimension, a measurable quantity that has both a magnitude and a direction. As soon as the magnitude changes, it's a different dimension. If its direction changes, it's also a different dimension. Whereas distance is a scalar. It's just the size, there's no direction related to it. So generally in physics, we are interested in displacement, not distance. Now, there are some exceptions to the rule, but generally that's the one you look at. And as I said before, the symbol we use there is S, and in distance, often the symbol we use is uh, D, just to be different, to differentiate between the two. Now, we also have our measurement of time, which I'm, gonna, I'm not going to write. That is obviously a critical point because often we're interested in, okay, an object's displacement has changed, but what's the time frame that's taken place? Well, if you remember from a previous video, we then have this concept of velocity. And the velocity simply is the rate of change of displacement. So if I were to put that in simple terms, I would go the velocity, that's the symbol, is equal to the change in displacement. So delta S, delta simply means change over time. And that gives us the average velocity. Now notice I use here displacement. That's critical. Why? Well, there's another variable that's often referred to, but is a little different. And that's the concept of speed. Again, many try to change those two, that velocity and speed are the same thing, but they're not. The first thing is that speed, and I'm going to use SP as our symbol, is not displacement over time, it's distance over time, the change of distance over time. And so you can see that the magnitude of my speed might actually be a different value. If your distance is larger than your displacement, then your magnitude of your speed is going to be different. And secondly, the fact that our distance is a scalar quantity, speed is a scalar quantity, whereas velocity is based on displacement, which is a vector quantity, therefore velocity is also a vector quantity. We need a direction as well with velocity. So imagine this. 
If I were to, let's say, start from A and run all the way around B and come back to A, my distance is quite large and my speed can be quite high in terms of its average speed. But I could argue that, well, I'm back to the original point, so my displacement is zero. Well, if my displacement is zero, my average velocity ends up being zero. So you can see the difference between the two. And the final variable, of course, we need to talk about is acceleration. And what is acceleration? Well, acceleration is talking about how fast my velocity changes. So we're really interested in the delta V over time the change in velocity. So like acceleration being based on velocity and velocity being a vector and velocity and obviously displacement is a vector, acceleration is a vector as well. And so here, as long as my velocity is changing, I have an acceleration. How can my velocity change? Well, it can change in the magnitude, but it can also change in the direction as well. So as long as the velocity changes, we know acceleration has taken place. Now, since it's a change of velocity, so we have acceleration becomes a change of velocity, and then often we use these two symbols, V and U, to separate my final velocity from my initial velocity over time. And as a result, we get an equation, which we call an equation of motion, that ties in velocity in time and acceleration. So there is the basics of our kinematic analysis. Now, if we really wanted to study this well and see the interrelationships between all of these variables, the best thing we do is we do some data analysis and we graph the data that we get. And the classic graphs that you get are usually displacement versus time graphs, velocity versus time graphs, and acceleration versus time graphs. And using those graphs, you can work out other equations of motion, but you can also look at the relationships between those variables. That's the next video. Have a look. That's my video on graphing motion. I'm Paul from High School Physics Explained. Take care. Bye for now.